Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Laura Canfield Show, the Awaken to Happiness Now Global Series. Thank you so much for being here with us today. And I'm so excited. My good friend, teacher, mentor, brother is here with us, Pete Bernard. And we're going to be talking about earning the light and what that means and what that looks like, and plus a lot more. And most of you don't know Pete, I'll be honest, but some of you might. But for those of you who don't know Pete, um, he is one of my teachers, one of my mentors, and I absolutely love and adore him. I respect him. He's a wonderful healer. I've talked about him to a lot of you. And, um, he, you know, he the work he does, it works. So he is an Algonquin from the Algonquins of, I'm not even going to try to say it, say it, pick I am not, but a First Nations in Golden Lake, Ontario, Canada. So he does do shamanism. And I've always said, it's not the regular shamanism from Peru and all that kind of stuff. This is Canadian shamanism. And his interest is in healing, right? And he's been healing himself from his, uh, from early childhood traumas. And of course, that work is ongoing and you have to get that healing is always going to be a, fa a fact of life, right? Healing, clearing. And so he's going to be here sharing with us and talking to us about uh, a new program. Well, it's not a new program, but it's starting in January called Earning the Light and what that means. He's also gonna be doing mini readings. And I know some of you um, are going to definitely want to take parts. So you want to raise your hand or you want to type your question in the chat, because like I said, working with Pete is really, really, hmm. It's special, but it's really difficult. When he posts his calendar being open on Facebook, I mean, it's gone within a day, well, less than a day, an hour, two hours, it's booked, right? So, so sometimes I will see, you know, just like, oh my God. So then I'll go in quickly, I'll book a session. And then I'll, later on, I'm like, oh, Pete, I'm fine. I don't really need a session. Can we reschedule? <laughs> but it's like, I saw the calendar, there was an opening, I took it because it's really hard to get a session with Pete. He is in high demand and because of what he does and he's awesome and amazing. So Pete, this is uh, not the first time you're here, but um, it's been a while since you've been here with us. So mm -hmm. welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's always and, an honor to be here. Oh, thank you. And can you just take a moment um, and share a little bit about who you are, your story, and even the type of healing work that you do before we get started? Sure. Yeah, my name is Pete, and I was born into obviously uh, an Algonquin family. So I'm Algonquin. I guess the word we use is Indian, Native, First Nations. It changes, uh, you know, week to week in terms of that. And I grew up kind of uh, in a lot of trauma. Just a lot of things happened in our family life. Um, things happened to the family. Uh, also born into intergenerational trauma as well. And, you know, trying to sort yourself. So, you know, we've had people in the family that you know, it's difficult when you understand the history of Native people in Canada, is up until like 1960, it was illegal to do ceremony. So people who did healing before then, they would never let you know. And most of the healers at that point were kind of secretive. So I wasn't really that aware that there was also secretive healers in my family as well. And um, so I just began to learn and uh, didn't really see the practical application at the time. It was just more way of past time or kind of taught to you as a game. But then as you begin to happen in life, you know, life happens to you and you get thrown into a lot of different ways trying to navigate uh, relationships, your own life, your own self-worth. You're dealing with uh, abandonment, rejection, betrayal, all of those things. And you're just trying to find yourself. So that's really what the work is or what it became to me. Just trying to unravel what everyone told me that I was and trying to figure out my own on my own terms what I was and who I was. Absolutely. And that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's like when we're trying to figure out who we are, it's a journey and we don't always know right away who we are, what we are, what we believe in, um, what our values are, what our truths are, mm -hmm. what our gifts are. That's something that everybody asks, what are my gifts? But the thing is, we all know what mostly uh, some of our wounds are, right? And the, the wounds that we don't know are the ones that were like hidden, you know, and they're like in the background and we're just not aware. And those wounds are sometimes the ones that are um, playing out in our lives, right? Really controlling our lives per se. So we're not really conscious of them sometimes, but we can be, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Like you have a strategy to deal with generally life and then all the different aspects of life. So we know that people who have you know, been 
scared or threatened or their security has been threatened in some way, they tend to move towards controlling more later on in life. They like to control everything and everyone around them because that's what creates security. If I'm in control of all these variables, I'm in control of the outcome is the belief. Yeah, and so many people that I know, even in my groups, and I used to be a control freak, so I call myself a recovering control freak, but I was always trying to control everything around me so that I wouldn't feel the pain, I wouldn't feel the hurt, I wouldn't be aware of the wounding because I didn't want to deal with it, right? So it's like, mm -hmm. I'm going to control everything. At the same time, what happens is I'm not living, right? I'm not living my life. Oh, and so well said, like so many people survive their life. They don't really enjoy their life. It's difficult to believe you can really live your life fully when most days are just a struggle to just get through. Yeah. You're just, you're just trying to not get hurt today. You're trying to not lose what you already have. The thought of actually gaining or being something more than what you are is terrifying. Yeah. Because we don't want to get, we don't want to get hurt if it doesn't happen. We don't want to be disappointed. We don't want to mm -hmm. lose what we, you know, that little bit of control we have. And I just want to share really quickly before we go even deeper is like, you know, I've known Pete for a while. <laughs> and, you know, the first time that I had a session with Pete, I remember it was like a long time ago. And it was one of those power uh, retrieval ceremonies, right? Power retrieval um, processes, mm -hmm. which I thought was great. And I still remember it. And it was like, it was fantastic, right? And then a few years later, <laughs> I was talking to my good friend, Jen, and I had a session with her and we're, we're talking and she goes, oh, you should take the, this, you know, class with Pete, the, this program with Pete. And I was like, oh, and I'll be honest, you know, and, and you won't be offended, I know, but I was like, oh, you know, I'm really not into shamanism and I'm really not into mm -hmm. Indian native stuff, you know, that's just not mm -hmm. me. <laughs> I said, mm -hmm. I said that to her, right? And I'm sure I said that to you too. And then I, um, I signed up late, you know, and like you accepted me into the program and I, and I signed up and I joined and it was like the best thing I have ever done, folks, the best training program I have ever done. And I've done a lot. But this was by far, hands down, the best. I cannot recommend it highly enough. It was two and a half years. It was grueling. And not everybody who joined the program at the beginning stayed in the program. You mm -hmm. know, people quit, people leave. But the thing is, if you stick it out, if you stay with the program, your life changes. Your life cannot be the same as it was when you first started. And mine definitely was not. And it brought up so much stuff. And I've, I've, I've shared a little bit with some of you. I mean, I remember there was a time we were doing a process in the class and I was like, I thought I was going to like be annihilated. I thought, you know, all the stuff that was coming up that I was going to die in that moment. I was going to explode in that moment, you know? And it's like, I don't know what happened, you know? It's like, but the thing is so much stuff was being, was coming up. So much stuff was being healed without us doing the actual processes just because we were in the program. But we did the processes as well, right? So we were learning and teaching and like doing the processes. But, you know, stuff was happening behind the scenes that we weren't even aware of. And that's because of Pete's teachings, his wisdom, his healing, his guides and etc. That it was like, as you know, if I could, <laughs> like, I always said to Pete, I said, Pete, you have to do it again so that I can join via Zoom because I like, you know, I'm going to be in Vienna. And it's like, now he's offering it on Zoom and I'm like so excited. But this is mm -hmm. something that you really want to, you know, we'll talk about it later, but I mean, Pete's the real deal. You know, when people talk about the real deal, Pete is the real deal. He's not fake. He's not phony. He's not, you know, some of you know who I am because I work with you. And, you know, I, you, you always say, what would Alara say, right? What would Alara do in this situation? Well, me, when I was working with Pete, what would Pete do? <laughs> what would Pete say? You know, when I was like, it's stuck in my head. Mm -hmm. What would Pete do? What would Pete say about this, right? So Pete, I just want to honor you really as being such a wonderful teacher and such a wonderful presence of non-judgment and just love and patience. Cause you know, you were very patient <laughs> with me, right? Well, thank you very much for that. You know, and I think <clears throat> when I look at my own life and the myriad of mistakes I've made, it just brings you to a point of compassion like for yourself. And if you can have that for yourself or even for other people to start, if you start with one of the two, you, they'll meet in the middle. Yeah. Everyone's just trying to do the best they can. And it's normal to not want to be hurt. It's normal to not want to feel disappointed. But those are the things we pass through. It's like a birthing. You have to pass through those so that you can have whatever's on the other side of that. 
it's difficult when people you know talk about how much their wounds govern their lives because mm-hmm. what you do your day is basically sorted around consciously or non-consciously about avoiding certain things about avoiding certain people and avoid about not having certain conversations and not doing the things that you need to do and, and, and doing other stuff yeah so your life your life becomes the outcome of that and if you were to spend more time being able to just sit with your discomfort and don't have an expectation of it just share space with it because it's not going to kill you because if it if you die it dies it's not mm-hmm. stupid mm-hmm. it just it just wants your presence and if not we act like prey in our own life we're constantly being stalked by issues and emotions and thoughts and uh, scenarios and if you want to become the alpha in your life you've got to figure out how do we you know you and i alara are very much the same is that we we live in an eat what you kill world we go out to provide for ourselves and you know i hunt wounds for a living (laughs) i track them i find them and i heal them and help the clients heal them, I should say. And mm-hmm. that's what I've been able to do for myself. And it's given me a much better quality of life in terms of who I want to be. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, we all have wounds, wounding, right? It's, that's normal. But it's like, Pete doesn't la- allow those wounds to distract him from living his life, distract him from fulfilling his mission and his purpose, right? For, distract him from serving in, in the highest and best way possible. And unfortunately, that is what we do. You know, we sometimes get distracted by our wounds and our stories and we go off track. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, and it's just easy because all the places that you want to get in your life, you have to pass through some pain, some discomfort and some things you don't want to do. It's designed that way. If there was just one straight shot to what you wanted, you would have gone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but, absolutely. But so much of us, yeah, so much of us, like we don't want to pass through that and, you know, earning the light is about, are you willing to pass mm-hmm. through a moment of pain to end a life of suffering? Mm-hmm. And that's really the deal, like we're offering people is like, this might be uncomfortable, but it's manageable. And if it just keeps going on, all of us, we know where our issues are going to lead us. They're going to lead some people to not having a relationship that they're capable of having because the history, the unhealed history of their relationships tells them this is what to expect. And this is the type of people that you attract. And it's not that it has your only truth. It has been maybe a truth up until now. So in this concept of shamanism, we are truing. We, are, we know that the truth evolves. It's not that there's any one truth. I mean, because you change, therefore your interpretations change and your truth changes. Yeah. But I just see so many people deny themselves of things that they really need. We all need human connection. We all need tribe. We all need ceremony. We need love we need to be touched and all of these things hit up against your self-worth you know i could have said today oh i don't want to go on a lara show you know she's got a lot of people and there's other people who are better than me and you know (laughs) you you know you 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 can go through and do that whole dance for everything but of the of the times that you are invited to show up and step up in your life is why you're here yeah and if you think about people in your life who've stepped up for you, who showed up for you, they're inspiring you to show you that you're worth it. And sometimes we struggle receiving that. I know I do. We know our, yeah. yeah, we know ourselves in a way that is hurt. We know ourselves in a way that is being blamed or shamed or guilted. And that's how most people see themselves. When someone actually shows an interest in you as a friend or more, the first thing you're thinking about is I got to get away from this person as quickly as I can before they figure out who and what I am. So in earning the light, you know, you've heard this expression before, show me the parts of yourself that are bloody, wounded, and damaged. And those are the parts that I will love first. So we're not looking, yeah, so we're not looking at the people being uh, perfect or even being gifted in healing. I mean, your gifts have been your wounds. It just doesn't seem like that. I mean, if we could all go back and decide to choose a life that had no pain, I think a lot of us would, maybe I would. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, like, how would that go? I mean, in the beginning, our wounds do teach us, but ultimately, love teaches us as well. Yeah. And to being able to open up to both give and receive it is not easy. Because when you put yourself out there, like, you tell someone, like, how you feel, like, really how you feel, 
the first thing that comes are expectations. Like, how are they going to take it? What if they don't take it well? What if they don't reciprocate? What if they don't feel the way that I feel? And that's not the purpose of life is not to be guaranteed of a comeback or a return immediately or from that person. We talk about speaking our truths and the only truth is that everything is love. And it's just being expressed in a way that maybe isn't ideal for you right now. But the more that you learn to open up, you bring who and what you are into this world. That's what's needed. Mm-hmm. And the, even, even the, you know, like you just said, everything is love. Even those challenges, even those wounds, even those experiences that, you know, we don't like and we wish we didn't have to go through them. Even those are filled with love and are loving because they're teaching us a little bit more about who we are about ourselves right and also right. about the experience bringing us to that 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 uh, sense of awareness of what is you know and we once you know what is it's like okay i don't like this i can change it right yeah and in the absence of an experience or a question there's no need for us to reflect or look deeper so when something happens you have to evaluate this is what happened this is how it's making me feel these are my thoughts around it and this is my belief that it is created or revealed So those are the things that cause you to go deeper. And most people don't believe they can actually choose what they believe. They just think that their beliefs are their beliefs and that's that. Mm -hmm. We choose choose our beliefs because they work for us. And that's the thing. That's what everybody has to get. Whatever beliefs you have right now, even the ones you, you don't like, but they're serving you and that's why you have them. As soon as they stop serving you or as soon as you don't give them that much power, then, then you can have a different reality, a different a choice, a different life, right? But, but we think that this is what I believe and it has to stay. Or sometimes it's like, well, I don't know what I believe. Well, you might not know consciously what you believe, but your experience is showing you what your beliefs are, right? Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. And more importantly, when you have a belief, a belief is a spiritual concept. It's not just a mental construct. A belief is an expectation of the universe. So what it does is it signals to the kind of environment that I want, not the one that I really want want, but it's the one that I'm creating because I don't know that I want it. If you believe that, you know, it's difficult to trust people, if that's a belief you have, there's a reason why. And to tell people like, well, you know, it's not the only way that you can be. At that point, your beliefs are informing your life, but it's not the life that you want. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to figure out your beliefs are key because everything stems from it. All of your emotions will play into your beliefs. All of your thought process will be- go back to your beliefs and the outcomes of your life will go back to your beliefs. And generally when people realize that, oh, you know, see, I was right about it. They get rewarded by, by predicting a negative outcome that came true. Mm-hmm. So see? it's like a, <laughs> a really horrific kind of lottery that you just won. Mm. And, and, you know, and that's the thing, I think all of us, we have to really get clear, you know, from our heart space, not, not mentally, but get clear, what do we want? How do we want to experience life? What do we want to experience in our lives? And we've talked about this before, you and I, right, about what we want to experience. Um, and it's not always easy, right, because we were so, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? We're so conditioned by society, by our family, by the collective, by the media of what we should want, right? So that, but Mm -hmm. when we actually go deeper within ourselves and say, okay, you know, life is not working out exactly how I want. What is it that I truly want, right? Mm -hmm. And once, and I've always, I always tell people, it's like, it's not going to be the million dollar house, folks. It's going to be more like, I want Mm -hmm. peace. I want joy. I want, you know, some sort of quality or virtue. Yeah, and I think that's the word that we use in the program now is that we call that value. Mm-hmm. And the value is what does, has value to you, not what does have value to, uh, you know, keeping up with the Joneses. Because the things that other people are pursuing, they might, they're probably not for you. Mm-hmm. Like if you want to live in a home that's kind of off grid and sustainable, that's your value. That has value to you. Yeah. But you pursue a lot of things that don't actually have value to you, but so even within your wants, you got to get clear as I may want this, but what value does it really have to me? Does it speak to my values? Does it make me feel a certain way? Does it bring me to a sense of completion or satisfaction? Absolutely. So for those, so some of you know, we just moved out into the country and um, we love it. <laughs> it's like so quiet, like you wouldn't believe, right? Before we were downtown Vienna, like in the most densely downtown part of Vienna you can get to, right? We were downtown. 
and there was lots of noise, always so much noise. And here we don't see anybody. <laughs> <laughs> we don't hear anybody. We might hear a tractor once a, once a day, you know, but there's nothing, right? And it's so beautiful. And I've taken some pictures and some sunset um, photos and videos because it's like, it's, this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted the peace. We wanted the quiet. We wanted the, you know, the, the scenery, you know, the, the trees, there's green fields. I, I don't even know what they are, but there's green fields, right? There's still flowers in bloom for those of us in Ottawa and Toronto, you know, it's like, what? You know, there's green fields, flowers in bloom, all, co all colors of trees. And it's so peaceful. You, you hardly even hear a dog barking. I haven't, you know, like no roosters <laughs> where we are either, right? So nothing, it's so peaceful. And this is what we were wanting. We wanted that peace and quiet. We wanted to be away from the crowds. We wanted, but, you know, my husband didn't know I wanted that until like May or something when I kept saying to him, I, I need more space. I need more space. And it's like, well, what do you mean? We're always in one bedroom or one room, right? No, I need more space. And the space was more, yes, physical space, you know, but also the, the space outside, the expansiveness outside. We can see, you know, the stars from our courtyard. You know, we, we can see the sun in our courtyard. We have a courtyard, <laughs> you know, where Neo can run and play, you know? And so those are like, that's what was important for me. I wanted that space so that I can connect to nature, to, to connect to the universe, to connect to everything that is, you know, and not have all the noise from all the people, right, in, in downtown Vienna. So, mm -hmm. you know, get clear. What is it? That, so that, that's our value. Our value is that peace and quiet, you know, that calm, right, instead of the frantic, frenetic energy all the time, you know a place for Neo to run because it brings us so much joy to see him running back and forth. You know, he gets so excited. So those are some of our values for us and it's coming to pass. You know, it's, it took a while, but we found something beautiful and we love it. And, you know, it brings us joy and it brings us that calm, you know, because I can get a little intense sometimes, right? So it brought us that calm. So ask yourself, what do you want? All right. Pete, did you want to add anything to that? I know you just moved too, like, I don't know, maybe January or I don't know. Time goes by so yeah. fast. Yeah, in mid-January, um, we sold our place in the west end of Ottawa. We moved to the outskirts, bought a 19-acre farm, and um, that's been life. Uh, it's been good. <laughs> lots of space, lots of space, and um, it was a value that we had. Is yeah. that wanted a different kind of life and got it. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, right? So you have to know what it is that you want, right? You have to, and then you have to take action. You, have, you still have to act on it. Mm -hmm. All right, so I, I wanted to remind everybody, um, Pete's going to be doing some mini readings. So, you know, I highly recommend that you raise your hand or type your question in the chat. Pete's amazing. And any chance you can get to work with him is a gift. Okay, it's a gift. So um, raise your hand and mini readings, everybody, and no general questions. No, what's in my field? What's blocking me? No, it has to be something specific. You all know that. Right, so because I want this to be transformational for you, I want this to be helpful for you, you know. So just asking something general is not going to be helpful. Okay, so Pete, are you ready to take a few questions? I'm ready. All right. So um, phone number ending in three seven eight. Do you want to raise? Do you want to unmute yourself? You're going first. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hi. Destiny. Oh, this is Destiny. Woo! Thank you, Alara. <laughs> You're welcome. I've been telling oh. Destiny to have a session with you for I don't know how long. Long time, long <laughs> time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I too. I'm I'm Native American too. I'm Ottawa and Potawatomi, mm -hmm. and I am clearing my ancestral lineage. And with that, um, I guess you can say I'm in the midst of my journey. Mm -hmm. I'm in the midst of my journey right now, um, and it's very intense. So what's the specific and question, I, Destiny? Um, let me see. Um, I don't, I've got my mother's house now, and I'm looking at it, and I'm here, and it's, it's just what you mentioned. It's like right in town, all kinds of crazy, all kinds of noisy, and I'm contemplating whether I should sell it and find a place of peace, a place where I can be in peace, because I don't feel like this is where I want to be. But there's a part of me that's torn because it's my mother's home. This is where she's been her whole life. Ah, so I guess I'm just 
I don't know. I and she passed know, earlier time, this year. Yeah, in April. Yeah. Yeah. You always have to remember destiny that <clears throat> there's no future in the past. Yeah. And that for a lot yeah. of people, a lot of people, and I mean this in the nicest way, is that my parents in the last four years have both passed, is that you have to let certain legacies die with people. What God. was val yeah. what was what was a value to them is not necessarily going to be a value to you. The path that they walked is not necessarily your path. So if it's not a place that you want to be, if it's not making you feel good, then yes, you need to move on. Oh, well, that feels like a, a relief because a lot, yeah, I feel the need that like I'm holding on for my mother, but it's for my mother, not for me. <laughs> and like I said, your mother yeah. has no long, your mother no longer has any earthly needs. So remember, we all grow from our roots, but we are not limited to them. Yeah. Well, awesome. that was good. good. That was, <laughs> yeah, that was a good message. Good. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pete. Thank you, Alara. Yeah, thank you, You're Destiny. <laughs> All right, Caroline, you want to unmute yourself? Hi, Pete. Hi. Uh, there, was, there was a lot of people last, no, last uh, I can't remember now, um, maybe June or July. We, we, I met you at a workshop with Nora up in, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, hi. Hi. Okay. And so like my heart is so heavy for, from you guys saying um, you have a farm and you want the peace and all that. Alara knows me as long as she's probably knowing you and uh, horses, farm, the peace, connecting with nature uh, is, is what I've wanted. So if I had a question, the question would be, I, 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 where, how, uh, why can't I attract the money to pay for it? Because I find the farms no problem. So I'll leave that with you. Thank you. Okay. For something specifically in your timeline from age 11, mm -hmm. and it is a belief that you have, and that belief creates an artificial block. It's not a real block. Every time you get close to something, you're going to mm -hmm. sabotage. So you know what I'm talking about. Now, here's the great news. If you were to spend some time working on that specific age and what happened, things are going to open up for you in a way you can't even begin to understand. And the thing you're going to have to practice is on being able to receive. <laughs> and it's so easy to say, and it is so hard to do. Mm -hmm. There's some people who can't even receive a cup of coffee. It's like, it's, it's too much. It's like $1.59. It's not too much. <laughs> But we, if we can't practice with smaller things, we're never going to get the bigger things. I do receive a lot of the small things. I'm open yeah. just last week. Someone, uh, I, I spoke to them with three seconds, right? And as you know, stuff comes through. Mm -hmm. and, and she gave me $15 right there for three seconds. And I just, I just opened to receive. And I've received gifts and crystals and other things. So mm -hmm. It's How time much, for the yeah, it's time yeah. for the medium time for the medium size and big stuff to start coming through now. So you're practiced. Yeah. Yeah. So how do we do this? A session with you? How do we do this? What what do I need to? Uh, the website is the eighthfire.com. So if you go there, there's a, a session, there's a menu button for sessions. You just have to create an account and then you book whatever available times you can find. And what and is the would... site? What is the website? I'll, I'll, I'll put a link in the in the thing yeah. in a second. Give me one second. Awesome. Yeah, because I noticed Good. there's no special offer. So no, no. Nope. Mm -hmm. This is an offering of from my heart because I absolutely love Pete and I love my community. So it's you know, I think they are being deprived of him. They don't know about him. So the eightfire.com. The link is in the I chat. We agree, by the way. And yeah, <laughs> just being in it, just being in your presence. Pete, uh, so also honoring honoring you for the gifts that you do have, um, and I can vouch for, you know, myself, everyone here. He's just an amazing, beautiful, clear channel for for uh, for healing. Thank you. And he's Welcome. Canadian, right, uh, Caroline? So it'll be, it'll, he Pete's Canadian, obviously from Ottawa area. So yes, it'll I know. be in yeah. Canadian funds for you because Caroline yeah, exactly. is in Oshawa. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, uh, thank you. you. Yeah. All right. So, 
One second, here we go. All right, Maria, would you like to ask a question? You wanna un unmute yourself and <laughs> don't be walking, Maria. Maria? There she Hi. is. Hi. Hello. <laughs> I'm sitting, thank you. So what's your oh, question? This a, oh, this is a pleasure. Um, I have, funny, the last two calls are a resemblance of what I'm asking. Um, finances and um, freedom. And also if you would, um, mine is with my lineage. I, I have a, a real large estate that I have to see to, family estate. And I've been procrastinating on what to do about it. In the midst of that, I would like to have more freedom, like more opportunity for um, finances and jobs in my own personal life. But is there anything you can tell me ab about, like you just said something to this other caller that rang true that I'm not living for the past. I, I don't know whether I should pursue it in a very def definitive way to try and clear what's happened or should I just let it go and let life take care of it. It's, it would bring me such freedom if I did pursue it, but it's what it entails that um, I don't know if it's worth it. And also, I don't have the finances right now to really dive deep into it. That's the other obstacle that I'm facing. What this is bringing you back to is a roadblock of a period of your life between ages 37, 38, and 39. Yes. So you are back yes. at the same point now. So the pattern continues to repeat. So the only thing you can do is obtain the freedom that you want because the pattern will continue to play out in this lifetime until you pass if you don't. So this was oh. the challenge. So this is the challenge that you chose for yourself and you've always felt so obligated. You've always been the responsible one and that yes. sucks. That really sucks because what that means is that you can have this but not that and other people get to do things that you don't get to do because you have to do this other stuff. Yes. And you're and your soul no longer has anything to learn from that. It's now time for you to live for yourself. Oh, <laughs> I hear you. I feel that. And more importantly, it might not seem like it, but everybody will benefit. Everyone is going to benefit in a way. Mm -hmm. and, you'll, and you're going to be able to have what you really want. You're going to be given more than one opportunity for that is coming. So if you're willing to do the hard thing, the universe will do the impossible thing for you. Okay, can I ask clearly what that hard, hard thing is? Just, I feel like I've already done it, but if there's more to do, I'm just not aware of it. The thing is that you have to stop apologizing to yourself. <clears throat> you have to stop feeling so bad about things that you have done. Yeah. There's so much obligation and with that can come guilt and shame and regret, especially regret. Yes. So the time that it is taken is the time that it is taken. And of course we can all feel bad about the time that we think that we lost. But if you can move into the now for yourself and claim this space that wants to be claimed by you, everything works out. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Good. Thank you, Maria. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> breathe. Just breathe. Right? Yeah. Awesome. Good. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> See how gentle Pete is? Oh, my goodness. Right? He's like, everybody's <laughs> just like, he, they just have to look at you and just feel your energy and they feel so much better. <laughs> Nobody even has to say anything, right? It's like, I just want to be in his presence. Um, so I know that there was doo -doo -doo, uh, somebody down here wanted to ask, Susanna. Susanna she wants to know how to forgive men in her life and let go of anger and fear and the huge unworthiness that they have caused. That's a big one, Susanna. 
Yeah, so Susanna, <clears throat> you have to understand the theme of what's common between all these men that you need to forgive. It's what needs to be forgiven is the beginning of your pattern. So you have, they've all treated you in a similar manner. And that has brought you to a point where you've established a boundary. And the boundary is you don't want to be treated like that anymore. But the question is, what did you learn from what they taught you? And that's the difficult part is getting through the injustice of what has happened. And you have to set aside that emotional aspect and just look at what were they trying to teach you, even if they didn't know it. And that is what you've got to be able to bring forward into your life and begin to spend more time focusing on. So forgiveness is simply a matter of choosing to not carry with you the people that you claim you don't want to be attached to anymore. It is to set them down. Forgiveness literally means to render up to God. It's saying, God, creator, spirit, source, I can no longer carry this. This is too heavy for me. I'm going to offer it up to you. So you don't deserve to carry things or people who don't need to be carried, who don't need to be supported in that way. So that is the thing. You've got to focus on what did they teach you? And you have to see them as teachers. You have to reframe them. They're not just people who hurt you. They are people who are teachers to you and they need to be honored as such. And how I'm going to balance that out for you, compassionately for all of us, we've been the ones who've been hurt, but we've also been the ones who've done the hurting. Mm -hmm. And that's what brings us both back to the middle. And that's what, where compassion is born between those, that space of being hurt and being the one who's done the hurting. The space created between is the need to forgive. So you definitely got this. And don't worry if you can deal with this. It's not just about pain that you don't want to feel anymore. It's about the fear of moving into what comes after that. And you have to believe that there are people who want to support you, but they don't know how because they know too much about your history because you've shared it with them. And they don't know how to approach because, you know, we never say, when someone says, trust me, that doesn't mean you're going to trust them. That can trigger you. Mm -hmm. So some people in your life are trying to figure out how can I be there for her? How can I be there for her? And how can I make this work? So your job, Susanna, is to make it easier for people to love you. Mm -hmm. So this is, so I just want to share really quickly for Susanna and everybody else too. The teachings that Pete is sharing is not just for whoever's a asking the question, okay? These teachings are for all of us, okay? So you really have to look at this. And for those of you um, in my groups who we've done the forgiveness process many times, right? The, the, you know, and it came from Pete and you all find it so amazing and I find it so amazing and it's something that we have to continue to do on a regular basis. We, you know, forgiveness is an ongoing process and it's something that is one of the um, key tools in our lives to heal what is still holding us back, what is still keeping us stuck and let go you know, of that and render it to God, like Pete said, spirit, source, creator, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Right? So- yeah, none, of us, none of us are meant to be Sherpas of baggage, of emotional, spiritual, or wounded. Yeah not your job. You're meant to be alchemy. Your job is to change it by letting it touch who and what you really are. Yeah, absolutely. Good. <laughs> Thank you. Um, all right. So we're going to take a few more questions and then, I, and then I want to talk about the earning the light and then we'll, and et cetera, we'll see what we can do. <laughs> Caroline, I'll help you after. Okay. It's really easy. So Caroline's wondering where to book the session. She already purchased the healing session and got the email. She just wants to know where to book the session. Yeah, that's always, um, yeah, actually, actually, that's a good question because the right calendar the is not open, right? Yeah, the calendar is open. So if not, just put yourself on the waiting list. And then when it opens in January, um, you'll be notified and okay. assigned a spot. So, okay, cool. It's good. See, I've never done that. I've never put myself on the waiting list. It's like, no, I want it now or I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. Um, so I'm just going to go to Emily. Do you want to unmute yourself? Hello? Yes, thank Hi. you so much. You're welcome. Um, hi, Pete. Um, hi. I just, so I'm in an interesting point right now in my life where I moved out of my parents' house to live in Philadelphia on my own about six months ago. 
and now I'm feeling kind of pulled back to them. Um, and I'm just wondering what that's about. I'm feeling like drawn to being here again. And then I'm also um, kind of trying to open up my gifts in the realm of animal communication. And I'm wondering if you see that for me as well. Yeah, I definitely see animal communication for you. Mm -hmm. But I think remaining in Philadelphia where you are is mm -hmm. going to bring you much more opportunity than going home. Okay. You're going home because there's a karmic calling. Okay. You're still trying to pay off your karmic debt to your parents. Mm. And, and so what you're planning on doing is going there and sacrificing a part of yourself to make their lives easier. Mm. And so you don't need to pay that karma. You just need to heal it. Okay. And it's understanding that honoring your parents and knowing what they need mm -hmm. and they don't need, they don't need a sacrifice. They need just presence. They need, you know, to be cultivated in the love that you have and in the awareness mm -hmm. and every parent wants to see their child do well and be well. Mm -hmm. And even though they might not fully understand what you're about to do, mm -hmm. all they need to know is that it makes you feel fulfilled. Okay. Now, my mother didn't handle it well when I left a professional career to do what I do because she pursued security all of her life because that's what her upbringing, because she didn't have it. Mm -hmm. And it was heartbreaking for her and she didn't really understand. And I'm like, okay, you don't need to understand, but this is my church. This is my, my thing. So if you were to go back, it would be a step in the wrong direction for you and for the wrong reason. Hmm. Okay. And how there's do I do? There's okay. a woman coming. There's going to be a woman coming into your life within the next nine months. And she will be a good resource for you. Hmm. She's going to help you to grow. But we have to remember in that relationship, you're not going to be just a student. You'll give just as much as you Received. So I want you to be aware of the symbiosis of that relationship. Hmm. Okay. Because sometimes you just take a, a leader, uh, sorry, um, a position of just being a follower. Mm -hmm. And that is not required for what you want to do. You now have to learn how to lead and you learn how to lead initially by following. Mm -hmm. But don't take a back seat. Okay. The same gifts that brought you to this awareness of what you want to do. Are, have always been a part of you. They're always going to be a part of you. And if you invest in them with confidence, it makes you better. In doing what I do specifically, Emily, anyone can learn to do what I do. And mm -hmm. I'm very clear on that. It has nothing to do with gifts. It has to do with understanding the human condition. It's no different than working with animals. Only thing is animals are easier because they don't have our pretext. Mm -hmm. They don't have difficulty receiving. They don't have drama in the way that we do. They don't have, they're just, they receive, they're open. So their teaching for you is to apply that same kind of principle with your parents. Hmm. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and just one more point that I, I feel pretty um, like unsafe right now being with myself in my apartment. Is there something you would suggest for that? Yeah, your apartment is not laid out properly in terms of what we would call feng shui. Okay. So where is the um, the feet of your bed? What direction mm -hmm. is it pointing? Is it pointing towards the door? No. Which direction do you know is it pointing towards? I don't know. Okay. <clears throat> Here, I'm going to give you a very basic run through and it's simple to follow. When you are standing in the doorway of your apartment, mm -hmm. when you look around, I want you to look at the one thing that is in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to intuitively know it's not going to be a matter of your mind. You're going to see it. And you're going to be that doesn't belong there. And I want you to move it. Okay. Don't worry about where you move it to, where you move it to. If you know it's in the wrong place, I need you to find the right place for it. That's the second question. It doesn't belong here. Where does it belong? Okay. <clears throat> because the, the space above you that I can see, the shape of your ceiling, it's inducive to basically amplifying energy a little bit more. Mm. And so because it restructures energy, it can have a stronger effect sometimes on the nature of your space and how you feel in it. Mm. 
So at that point, you know, your your little feng shui in your in anyone's home becomes more important. Hmm. Okay. So when I walk into a place, like I generally, I that's what I do. It's just natural for me now. Why is this here? It doesn't belong here. What function does it serve? So for you, you just have to move one thing. Hmm. So find find the one thing, move the one thing, and then put it where it needs to be. Okay. And I want you to be completely guided by how you feel. Okay. Like, do I feel do I feel better now that that's moved? Does it look better? Does it feel better? And if it feels better, it's because it is. Okay. And it's okay. just about that one thing. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Emily. Mm-hmm. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> we learned something new about feng shui. I love it. Um, all right, cool. So Betty, you want to unmute yourself? Yeah. Hi. Hi, hi Laura. Hi, Pete. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, my question is, I know that um, I've heard you mention, Pete, that um, about harnessing energy. And mm-hmm. I wondered, um, I love that phrase. I just... I don't know how to do it and I or I feel like I don't um, because sometimes um, it feels like I know I'm really sensitive as are probably as probably everybody on this call to energies and sometimes I I love it when I'm excited with the energy and then I can work with it and I get so much done and then the other part is that I feel um maybe something happens, I get thrown off track, I don't feel safe. And then I'm like, I feel very stuck in it. So I wondered, you know, if you could help me with that. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to understand energy is just that it is whatever is intended either consciously or non consciously by whoever, whether it's yourself or somebody else around you. So when you're around energy that is, um, let's call it unresourceful, that could seem to be, it could be negative or heavy or toxic. That might be the intention of the person directing it at you. But if you were to imagine them kind of like throwing you a ball, the energy is the ball. So they are throwing it at you. But while it's on its way towards you, what if you could change it from what it is into something else? And that's the whole purpose of alchemy. So sometimes blessing the energy that is being directed at you with the intention for it to heal or for abundance or prosperity and not to just to benefit you but to benefit more than one person more than just yourself so what we're doing is we're using our consciousness to requalify the energy from what it is to what it can be and that's the concept of spiritual alchemy so we're not just saying the energy in here feels bad let's go we've all done that it feels horrible in here and maybe it does but our job maybe is to begin to change that energy to some degree So anytime someone directs energy at me, they are giving me a currency, whether or not they know it. They may intend the energy to be bad or or negative, but I'm going to harness it in midair, which means I'm going to allow myself to connect with how I'm feeling, getting a sense maybe intuitively of where it's coming from, but I might not know that. I'm going to imagine that I'm catching a ball of energy or I'm stopping it in midair. And then I'm going to just imagine in my mind that I'm healing it, purifying it, and I'm turning it into something, maybe love or something positive. And then after that, I'm then going to take part of that energy into me, maybe all of it. But if if I can do that, it will benefit more than just me. Because that makes your life a lot more resourceful. If people want to give you free energy, you know, good on you. I love that. I do too. That is awesome. Wow, that puts a whole different spin on it and a whole, it's like so awesome to be able to, to turn it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. I love that. Thank you so much. I'm so glad Laura had you on the call today. Thank you so much. Lots of love to you and everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Lots of love to you. Thank you, Betty. That was a great question. I loved it. Yeah, good. <laughs> Something we haven't mm-hmm. talked about on any of the calls was harnessing energy. Ah, okay, cool. Thank you. All right, uh, Bianca, you want to unmute yourself or do you want me to just ask your question? Uh, I'll unmute this. Oh, there you Hi, go. Pete. I'm Hi. also from Ottawa, so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, 
so I was saying I've been uh, I've been put on sick leave. Uh, I had a career. I have a career in the government, and um, I need to recreate myself. I want to go, you know, recreate. I, and I kind of want to do like I desire a new life, a new in income. But I keep like going and stopping, going and stopping. It's partly part of my family as well, where where you know my husband wants security and, and things like that. And we have kids and and things like that and I'm like going and stopping myself every time that I takes a turn I kind of stop myself so I'm like back and forth back and forth back and forth a lot of LR can say that I can attest to it because I'm not choosing I'm stagnant in a way security is such a funny word because it implies something it implies certainty of an outcome yeah and the, the problem with security is that it can never give you growth and that is where your issue comes in. You want to grow from beyond where you are mm -hmm. and you're being asked to go back into uh, a pen where they're going to close the door behind you and your soul knows that. Okay. So while, so while you might have a form of security, it will not be free. No, 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 the cost to me personally is heavy. Correct. So what you need to do is to use some of the resources that you have you need to begin investing in the life that you want. And it doesn't have to be a lot. Okay. It's mostly going to be investment, mostly probably of time. Okay. And then you've got to start to make a transition. So this is a more responsible way of getting what your soul actually needs without having to give up the perception of security. Yes. <clears throat> okay. And how do I get myself to that transition? Because I've seemed to have blocked everything the most significant block getting started and it's like whoops no i get the most significant or most recent i would say as it relates to your specific question was age 22 age 22 directly relates to the starting and stopping yeah and it comes down to a point of when you were being parented a lot of uncertainty was instilled in you a lot of second guessing yes and that second guessing prevented you from stepping into your power. Okay. You never became an alpha in your own life. No. Yeah. And, and every time you ask advice, it's well intended. And when people give it, it's well intended. But it's a substitute for your own soul's calling. So your soul is equally calling you, but other people are calling you and you're answering their voices and not your own. Yeah, I'm second guessing myself a lot, yeah. Yeah, and so the premise is, um, what I love about shamanism is that for us, nothing is right or wrong, everything is an exploration. And when I do that, it takes so much pressure off of me. Like, I don't have to get this right. I just have to explore and eventually I will find the way. I made the same transition that you did. Okay. You know, I used to work for the federal government for a while too, in addition to having other careers. and. <clears throat> you know, I was able to just listen to a voice that didn't make any sense. Not logical, it, but so much fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My logical mind was like, what are you doing? This is nuts. You know, the first month I, I did this full time, I didn't necessarily make a lot of money. The second month I made a little bit more. I mean, and just, I didn't have a lot of savings at the time. But what I really did is I married what I did. That's what I want you to understand that makes me maybe a little bit different than some people. Okay. Is this is not a job for me. It is not a career for me. I got engaged to what I was going to do. I married what I did for better or for worse. And I made the promise that no matter what happens, I will always do the work. Even if I have to get a part-time job or whatever and do the other stuff part-time, I will commit to it because it's important to me and my soul. Okay. Yeah, that and that's sense. and that's the level of commitment that you're going to have to make at some point with the things that are important to you. Okay. You need growth. You don't need security in the way that you think. And I can only speak from that. You know, my mom used to say, you know, well, I just want you to have security. You're going to need uh, these benefits. And I said, Mom, would it be better for me to be in the job that I love? where I don't, I'm not going to need health benefits because I'm not going to get sick from stress or do you want me to be in an environment that's going to stress me out where I'm going to need those benefits because I really am sick. Yeah. 
Yeah, but when we, <laughs> yeah, because people always say to you, um, you know, you have to hope for the best and plan for the worst. That's the stupidest thing anybody can do. It creates such duality. Like those are two completely different outcomes and you can't serve two masters. No. I mean, you can take, yeah, you can take reasonable precautions for anything and you should, but to simply plan for the worst is not how I plan on living my life. Mm -hmm. Whatever time I have, it's just, I would rather sit on my park bench and have my coffee and be whatever I'm going to be versus, versus worrying about things that I can't control. And remember, when your husband wants you to have security, it's well intended. I'm not saying it's not a good goal, but the, the, the thing is for most people is that being too secure means no growing and it means no change and it means stagnancy. You're going to stagnate. Yeah, and that's not fun. That's, I've been there for a while. Yeah. And everything that you're going through right now will be part of your teachings that you begin to teach other people when you're working with them. I've been where you've been. This is what you're gonna do next. This is what I did. This is what you're doing right now. And this is how we get through it. All of our blocks for all of us help us navigate for other people as tour guides. Okay, yeah. You know, like my, my ex-girlfriend, you know, um, back in the day, like all of her friends were in different kinds of careers and she never really knew how to introduce me because they were all professionals in some degree. And then it was like, um, I would tell people what I would do and this is what they would say. You must find that very rewarding. So what does that mean? That what you do is not rewarding? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For a lot of people, I'm guessing, yeah. The saddest thing my dad ever said was, oh, don't, you know, don't choose for your heart. 90% of the people go to work just to make money. And I was like, I started crying right away. Because it's true, 90% of the people go to work to make money. They don't yeah. like what they do. And it's interesting with jobs, you know, because for jobs that we get, you apply for the job. Yeah. So we can't even really, we can't even really complain. No, because I always tell people it's just as hard to apply for a bad job that it is for one that you're going to like more. But this it's... is not a job. This is like recreating myself. So now I'm like, hey, okay, what do I do now? It's so, fun. so Pete, do you, do you see Bianca as a healer of some sort? I see her actually more in terms of coaching, but obviously healing is obviously implied in that. Mm -hmm. I mean, coaching and healing are very interchangeable. It just depends on the style, mm -hmm. but I definitely see her in like a coaching type setting, coaching program. And she'd really be able to tap into her existing base with what she currently has. And a lot of people are in need of it now. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just Don't giving think. a little bit more of a little push nudge kind of thing here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Delara's mm -hmm. like, go. <laughs> <laughs> I told her like so many times, and it's like, you know what? You have to choose. At this point, just choose something. And I told her that when you choose something, then you'll know in that instant if it's the right choice or not. Meaning it'll feel good or it won't feel good. And that's, and that's, you know, and it doesn't mean you have to stick with it. You can change your mind in the next instant. Mm -hmm. yeah. but, but sometimes when you're stuck in your head, it's like, I don't know what choice to make. Well, just choose and then you'll know. <laughs> it's a little trick. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both you're very welcome. much. Awesome. Thank it's you. one thing to understand and I just have to do it now. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. And, and go back and um, analyze or review what happened at 22, you know? Yeah, well, a little bit about the second guessing fear because of, that's when I started working. Yeah. So okay. Because that would be, yeah, I've got a pretty good idea. That's when I started working in, in the public sector, but I didn't go into a creative world. I went into an IT world. That's when I started. Okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so I want <laughs> I want to take a few minutes and talk about the Earning the Light program. I think we put the link earlier in the chat, but I'm going to just um, bring it up again because it might be gone now. So Pete, let's talk about this program. And like I like I said at the beginning, everyone, I took this program. When I took it, it was two and a half years, um, and I did it uh, weekends, you know, uh, intensive weekends, to be honest, and um, it was intense. It was intense, but it was in person at that time. So 
but I highly, highly recommend it. If you can take this program, if you can apply, you have to apply, okay? So you can't just take it, you have to apply for it. Um, there are uh, payment plans and all that wonderful stuff. It is, it's worth it. That's all I gotta say, it is worth it. I get nothing from this, so don't think that it's, I'm getting any affiliate commission. I get nothing from this, but I, I highly recommend it. So go ahead, Pete, do your spiel. All right. <laughs> so the Earning the Light program, the reason why we call it Earning the Light and people message me, it's like, well, you can't earn your light. We're all light. The thing is, we are all light, but we're also light that doesn't step up. We are light that backs away from things that are difficult. <clears throat> we we don't step up in our lives. So yeah, we are the light. We're the reluctant light. <clears throat> so in earning the light, you are earning your own light by looking at your core issues. So we start with abandonment, rejection, betrayal, your self-worth. You learn how to perceive beyond the physical senses. You learn to learn to look into the emotional body, the spiritual body, into uh, beliefs, agreements. You start looking at patterns in your life because if you're going to try healing your life issue by issue, or instance by instance, it will you'll never have enough time to do it. So you learn to start categorizing things that have happened into themes. You're going to learn how to heal the first time it happened, the last time it happened, and the worst time it happened. Those three points will collapse the entire timeline of everything that's happened. You learn to do that. <clears throat> you learn to really look at um, what are your non-conscious beliefs that are guiding you. And more importantly, in trauma, you're going to learn to look and find the parts of yourself that you left behind, learn how to heal them, learn how to bring them back into you, be more integrated, and you're going to get comfortable with letting your life change for the better. You're going to be learn to not try to overprotect everybody in your life from you. You're going to learn to just be a better version of yourself. So yeah, you're learning how to deal with bad medicine or bad energy. You're learning how to heal it, how to heal spaces. You're learning how to literally um, manipulate time in a way that can be used for healing. So you saw me today pulling out ages for people, you know, that were really valuable to them. And to them, it seems like a really big deal because they think, oh, wow, he can do this and I can do it, but I'm telling you, I can teach you how to do it. Mm -hmm. And that's what's really important. You learn how to really bend reality. Reality is a suggestion. It's an agreed upon collusion that we all have. These are the rules, it's like the matrix. Some of these rules can be bent and some of them can be broken. So that's our consciousness. So we're learning how to really work with our consciousness. You're learning how to meet your animal totems, your spirit guides. You're learning how to heal into uh, your agreements, your contracts. You're learning how to renegotiate more importantly. You're learning how to heal your karma, your past lives. We do journeys for that. You're learning how to do astral projection. You're learning how to read the Akashic records, which is part of what I was doing today. So that's where I am right now when I'm doing readings for people. I'm actually up in the Akashic records, holding a book with your name on it. <laughs> and so, you know, depending on who I'm reading for, I'm just passing books back and forth to the, uh, to the librarian, you know, or the record keeper. So all of these things seem like they're really out of reach, but if you learn how to learn how to trust yourself and to just do the work in class, we can make anyone a proficient healer in two years with no experience. You don't need to be gifted. You don't need to have had a near-death experience. You don't need to have an entourage of spirits around you. You just have to have a desire to learn. And it's not woo-woo. Now, everything that we do is very tangible. So you learn how to bring yourself into it, which is what we expect. You have to put your flair on everything or it's not gonna be interesting to you. So when I was doing you know, my version of learning, I had an abundance of issues, an absolute lack of patience, and um, I knew everything. And of course, that was not a great experience for me. <laughs> and it was, my, my grandfather was like, well, this is not about what you know, because whatever you know is not working, but you keep doing it because it seems right. So I had to learn to trust uh, somebody else's form so that I could really figure out what my own was. So as I began to make variances, that's when I started finding myself. I could bring myself into this work. And that's what we all want. You want to learn how to bring more of you into your own life and more of you into the world. If you think about why the world is the way it is, I can tell you very easily, it's because we don't step up. We don't bring who and what we are to the world. We accept the world, we get upset with the world, we're impatient with the world because we want it to change, we want people to change, yet we in and of ourselves don't change. So that's what earning the light is. It is about choosing 
to become the person you're meant to become by a combination of healing and by a combination of being and the ability to create your own future, but not just future, destiny. Beautiful. I love it. And, you know, I remember when I, <laughs> I swear it was like every weekend, I would say, you know, Pete would, would teach us stuff, right? And then it's like, oh, I can't do it. You know, like that was my first reaction was, I can't do it. And Pete's like, you can do it. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 I can't do it. And then, of course, I did it, right? And, and, and then it was so easy. So I always had that fear at the beginning of, I can't do it because Pete's so amazing. And he does it with so... Um, uh, flawlessly and with so much ease it's like oh I can never do that you know but now you know then I would do it in, in in the class and it's like no problem piece of cake you know it's like yeah awesome I was like oh yeah I can do it and every time even now years later you know when Pete would I would talk to Pete about something and he's like yeah you can do this it's like no 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 you're so much better he's like no you can do this it's like okay you're right I can but there are some things as you as some of you know I don't focus on you know I, I don't choose to work with but in the program you learn everything and it's amazing and there's so much um healing that happens in the program during the during the weekends or however it's going to be this time it's going to be on zoom but there's so much healing that happens and our job is just to show up really that's that's your job it's just to show up everything else will work itself out you know i you know i always think like there must have been like teams of guides working with all of us as we were in that class because it's like pete's talking and stuff is going on within me you know thing is things are coming up and things are changing and i'm like oh my god right and we haven't even done a process you know so it's like okay so things were always happening and they start a couple of days before the actual class right and that's why it's like this is about change are you are you wanting to change your life are you wanting something different are you wanting something better for yourself you know, change can be scary, but you know, life is all about change. And for the, and the, you know, it's most of you, some of you who are on these calls day after day, you know, there are some things in your lives that are not working, right? And, but you want them to change. So, you know, and you, and you want your life to be better or you want, you know, things to be better for you. So yes, it's possible. And, you know, a lot of, um, people on these shows and on these calls, they talk about, oh my God, do I have to continue healing? How much more healing do I have to do? How much more clearing do I have to do? Is this gonna be a lifetime thing? You know, I don't know, maybe. I mean, I don't do healing work every day on myself, you know? Yeah, until you learn how to live and at some point your living will become healing as it's happening. Mm -hmm. If you have real deep love in your life, sometimes that's the cure all. Yeah, because if you have that, sometimes it doesn't matter what's happened to you. Just we're trying to get there. It is about loving yourself, accepting yourself, being an allowance and receiving. Right. We're always receiving from the universe. But are you receiving consciously? Right. And, and I think, you know, I, I have to take that back. We're not always receiving. <laughs> A lot of times we have our hands up and saying no. Right. But it mm -hmm. is about learning to receive, learning to receive the support from the universe and from everybody, humanity around us, everybody, you know, and it's not easy. That was one of my stories was I always said, I'm not supported. I have no support, you know, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> I don't say that anymore. <laughs> so that, is, that has been clear. That's been healed and cleared. I don't have to say that anymore. Right. But I didn't know that that was a thing for myself until I started going through the program. You know, I'm sure there, there are lots of other stuff too, but you know, like that was one of the things, right? And Pete said that specifically, you know, it's like, oh yeah, okay. But it took me, you know, a while to get it. And so it's okay, you know, it's okay if it takes you a while. And the thing is with this program, you know, it's, if, it's gentle, but it's intense, right? So you have to be wanting to change. You have to be willing to do the work and the work is showing up in the class, that's it. And then doing the processes because you know you're going to be partnered up with somebody and you're going to do it but it's just showing up and like i said when we were in the program not everybody stayed till the end it's and like and yeah and uh, alara and i saw that and you know alara and i had this conversation in class and you know our takeaway was that you're either going to do the work and you should because your issue is every day your issue puts the screws to you it is yeah. doing the work it shows up you know, you, have you ever thought like, you know, I don't really need to have time for anxiety today. It doesn't go to the back of the line. 
it jumps the line. It's like I showed up. I'm ready to work. Yeah. Let's get Are let's you? get you anxious. Yeah. You need a you need a freak out right now. I've done the work. I've been outside doing squats. You know, I'm ready to go. Your issue is going to outwork you until you learn how to do the work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so some of you may not know what that means, what the work is, right? And so that is what you will learn in the program. What does Pete mean by the work? And a lot of times it is about being present, you know, really being present and being willing to be with that wound, with that story and allowing whatever it is to come up and then, you know, using the tools to, to heal it and clear it. But a lot of times we don't want to face what's there, you know? I know I didn't, right? And uh, I remember Pete saying at one point, oh, I didn't even know that about you because something had come up and it's like, you never once mentioned that, you know? And it's like, mm, yeah, because I, that was, you know, in the back, pushed back, pushed way, way, way back and I didn't want to deal with it. But mm -hmm. all your stuff comes up. But the thing is, I mean, there's so many people in that were in our program who are doing so fabulously, mm -hmm. you know? like I'm, I'm still in touch with a lot of the people and they're doing so fabulously i just love it right and so yes you have to do the work when the work is required but it doesn't mean that every day i'm looking for something to clear no i have enough other stuff to do right so that's that i will put the link in the email as well and on on youtube and the podcast but please do take a look at it please apply even if you have like a little bit of an inkling it's like oh maybe go ahead and apply right um, and then see, you know, and like I said, there is a payment plan, thank goodness, because, you know, we all need it, right? So there's a payment plan. And um, just ask your soul, you know, do I want to do this? You know, will this benefit me? And the soul is going to be like, do you want to grow? <laughs> the answer I promise will be you, yes. I, I promise you it will change your life. That's my promise. Yeah, You're I can guarantee be... that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It will change your life and it'll change your life for the better. I mean, my life now is so much better than what it was. And I'm a totally different person than I was when I first started the program. <laughs> Do you remember, Pete? I was like, I was so full of myself. And I was like, I don't know what the heck I thought I was. Oh my God. It was just amazing. And you it's to like- see what you, you to see what you've chosen for yourself, what you've manifested and everything that you said that you wanted to do, you're doing. and. You know, that's why you're an inspiration to, you know, so many of us and, you know, your, your callers and your followers. So it's good. I mean, everyone sees somebody when they are at the end of what they call success, when they've achieved it, they don't see the path of how they got there and how, you know, I was neurotic and I had panic attacks and anxiety and, you know, question my own self-worth. And then one day it's just like, this is crazy. You got to step up yeah. because my, the work, you know, my issues were doing the work and I wasn't. I mean, we I all that. have to ask what we all have to ask one question is like, why do our issues never just fade? Your dreams do, your hopes do, but why do your dream, like, why do your issues never just seem to fade out? Why do they always seem to maintain that intensity? It's because they do the work. So you need to do the work. You have to outwork your issues and it's not that hard. Mm -hmm. it's this, not is, that hard. this is different. This is different. Yeah. Yeah, this is different, totally different. It's it's really mm -hmm. so, and even if you, I mean, it's just that the two-year program show up, your, your issues will start to come up by themselves and they'll start to get healed and cleared. Trust me, you know, you will be a different person just being in the program. After that, if you keep, do, the, do the work, do the processes or do something else, it's whatever, but your life will change in those two years. I guarantee it. Um, so Pete, somebody was asking, Angela was asking really quickly about the energies right now. And you're like, and I just, I just wanted to finish off with that really quickly. Cause you're really, you have a pulse point with when it comes to energies and what's going on. And I always try and share sometimes when you say, okay, it's really chaotic right now, but it'll pass in two and a half days or something. Right. So I try and share that because then it's like this too shall pass, this too shall pass. But what, what do you perceive right now is going on that can help people? Right now, the opportunity is that people are being brought to an awareness of time, their time. And what they're realizing is either they don't have enough of it, but we've on people on the other side of the coin who are now beginning to feel bored, which is a blessing. Mm -hmm. And if you can feel bored, that means a part of you is at peace. So good on you. So in the time we're at, it's, we're kind of neutraling out right now. It's not as intense as it has been, but we've got another dip coming 
on the 23rd. On November 23rd, we've got a dip coming probably around 10, 17 a.m. Eastern time, and that's going to last for probably about three and a half days. Mm -hmm. Now, when the dips happen, people think it's bad. No, it actually it makes it easier for you to get down to your deeper issues. The more it dips, it's like the tide. When the tide goes out, you can now walk on parts of the beaches that was underwater before. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to dig as deep. So when that stuff comes up, pick the most important thing to you and just be able to sit with it or work with it or make friends with it to a degree. And that's how your life improves. That's how you use the calendar, like the energetic updates that I give. It's not about avoiding anything. It's about how to use it. It's all utilization. Mm -hmm. Alchemy. You were talking about that before. It's about alchemy and how we can change the energies that we're perceiving, right? If they're heavy, we can harness them, transmute them to something else, something better for ourselves, humanity, the collective, our families, etc. So mm -hmm. I'm glad Betty asked that question, but it's, it's something that we have to be aware of, you know, instead of going to judgment and fear as like, oh my God, the energies are so bad right now. No, take that opportunity to do the work on yourself. Just get you know, get clear with it, say what's going on here, what's coming up for me, and at the same time, transmute that energy, just use, mm -hmm. you know, your intention, and, and, you know, harness it, transmute it to something that will work for you, right, the energies are all here to work for us, they're not um, here to make us suffer or ha have a bad day or anything like that, no, you know, they're here to work with us and for us, so use them in that way. Yeah, even when, <clears throat> even when sailors were out on the sea, you know, the wind is your friend. Mm -hmm. It's not, oh, the wind is blowing us this direction. You learn how to harness it literally in a sail. You've got a rudder. And with everything that's working together, you learn how to harness it and go wherever you're going. Even a storm has a benefit. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Beautiful. I love mm -hmm. it. So everything can be a benefit to you and your life. Okay. To you creating your life, to you living your best life, being the best version of you, the better version of you, everything can help you with that. Okay. So, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, awesome. So again, you know, please do take a look at the Earning the Light package or program. Um, it's at the eightspire.com Earning the Light training program. I will put the links in the emails and et cetera, but apply. If you have a, like, a, an inkling of, oh, I think this might be good for me, apply and then go from there, okay? There's no pressure, of course, but just apply and then go from there. Um, just really quickly about these dips. I will always be alchemizing these energies. How do I move to a stronger side of peace? Keep doing the work. <laughs> I do much work daily and have been awake for a long time. Why am I keeping myself in struggle to not live for my soul and service? <sighs> Pete, do you wanna just ask that, answer that really quickly before you go? I, poor, uh, M had her hand, had her hand yep. raised for a long time. I didn't, I didn't, I missed her. I think it's a What's her. What's the name? M. M? Okay, Em, here's a very serious answer for you. You're afraid if you step for up further than what you already have, people are going to be making an exodus from your life. And it is true. You are going to continue to lose people. But if you do it, I also guarantee you new people are going to come into your life. Can't play small anymore. It's not just about service. It's about fulfillment. And you can continue to give from an empty cup. You give from your overflow. That's how we grow gods. That's how we grow people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. no one in my life now. Well, then we're here. Nothing, <laughs> then you've got nothing to lose. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. But but we're here, Em. So there's, there's not no one. We're here. But yeah, I mean, what have you got to lose? And that's what, you know, you always have to ask that question. I, I don't like it. It sounds negative, but I've got nothing to lose. Why not try it? Why not step forward? Why not do this? Why not do that? I wonder how mm -hmm. much fun I can have, right? And it's, you know, being of service is one thing, but, you know, feeling fulfilled in that service is another thing, mm -hmm. right? Those days of, you know, being of service and, and being challenged or suffering or struggling, those days are gone. It's not about that at all. So like Pete said, give and serve from the overflow, okay? Awesome, I love it, thank you. All right, everyone, we went, we went over what we were supposed to be doing, but that's okay. This was so much fun. It's always wonderful to, to talk with Pete, even when it's, you know, um, and this type of format, his, his like 
wisdom, you know, that, that comes through, through, you know, whenever I talk to him, whether it's personal one-on-one -on -one or whether it's this, so much wisdom. So please go back and watch and or listen to this again, because there were like so many tidbits, so many nuggets of wisdom, so many pearls. Uh, I, th I thought we had a phrase, uh, Pete's something or other, Pete's pearls. I'm not sure. But I, thought, <laughs> I thought we had something back then. Um, but always, and always, you know, ask yourself, what would Pete say in a situation? What would Pete do in a situation, right? So that's what I always, you know, when I get, get stuck, I say, okay, what would Pete say in this? What would Pete do in this, you know? And um, it's always been really helpful. So please do go to the eightfire.com book a session with Pete uh, and, and check out the training program, Earning the Light. You will love it. I, I, okay, maybe not love it, but you will change. <laughs> you, you will love change. the outcome. You will love the outcome. Absolutely. You will love the outcome. Mm -hmm. The process mm -hmm. may, may not be fun sometimes, but you will love the outcome. You know you're changing. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. So thank much. Thank you, Lara. It it's wonderful. such an honor being on your show. So thank you for everything that you do for everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I received that. Thank you. All right, everyone. Until next time, may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Bye for now. Bye-bye.